Hello there, I'm Ludwig, this is SQL Bootcamp Online Advanced Series. So in the previous um, video in this series, I showed you that even if you are running your queries that look pretty much the same, so in here I have just a simple join with the WHERE clause, uh, or two WHERE clauses basically, because I do have the AND uh, operator in between of them and then there's a second one that looks almost the same but it does have one additional space what happens in here this kind of a query will generate those two queries will generate two separate query plans all right so when you just select the information from your DMVs, you will see that each one of those statements, even though they just differ by this one little space in, in here, in between them, you will see that they will generate different separate query plans. Now those query plans, boom, you can see those, even though they are the same, they are two different entities. Now what do you do in order to avoid that situation? Well, if you have an environment when you're writing a lot of those queries, and these are indeed ad hoc queries, so you're just writing a query, finding out all of the information, and you don't want to overload your cache Plan, uh, your plan cache, you don't want to pressure that um, plan cache, what you can do is you can reconfigure your system by enabling advanced options and then optimizing your, uh, your um, SQL Server instance uh, toward the, uh, the ad hoc workload. So if I'll go back to my SP configure, Boom. I'll just select it in here, go with execute. And you can see that if I'll find the optimize for ad hoc workload option in here, boom, you will see that right now is set to zero. I do have the explanation of the X, uh, SP configure store procedure somewhere here on the SQL Bootcamp channel. So don't forget to subscribe and um, review that video if you want to. Uh, and then if you will op uh, change that option to one, both config and run value, and you do that by just selecting it, changing it to one, and then reconfiguring your server. You go with OK, boom, it got reconfigured. Let me just check that again. As you can see, my optimize for ad hoc workload option is being set to one. It did not require the reboot because this is a dynamic option. And what I want to do right now is I want to free the cache, boom, to make sure it's empty. Let me just verify that again. Boom. I'll just select the whole thing in here. My cache is empty. And right now, if I will run those same two, two queries again, the one without the space and then the one uh, with the space, look what happens. Again, selecting the entire thing, executing the workload, the execution plans, they were generated as expected. But then if I'll go down to my query that uh, pulls the information about my cached plans for all of the queries that select information from the sales order header, if I'll execute it, you will see that my cached plan is null. So even though the, ca the plan was generated for the time being of the execution of this particular query, it wasn't cached. So my uh, instance right now works in the ad hoc mode, meaning that I'm just writing the queries and I'm not putting aside every single plan that I just used to run those queries. And this is the way to release the pressure on your cache plan if in your on your cache if you are working in such conditions where you don't need those where you do not need sql server to remember those plans to cache those plans and then reach for those plans every single uh, time you are running a similar query all right this is how you enable the ad hoc queries or ad hoc or this is how you're optimizing the uh, workload for ad hoc queries on your SQL Server. I'm Ludwig, this is SQL Bootcamp Online, the advanced series. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know what would you like me to cover in the next episode. See you in that one.